Forbes came out with the eight best undervalued stocks for 2024. And that's what I want to cover in this video. And so guys, as you smash that like button, let me run that intro. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. And, and here's Forbes' eight best undervalued stocks for 2024. And before I get into the list of the eight stocks, I wanted to just go over the methodology that Forbes is using. But also what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into two of the eight names. And then in a subsequent video, I'm going to dive into another one of the names. And so just going into their methodology, you can see that they're looking for stocks that have moats, so enduring competitive advantages, and stocks that have PE ratios below 20. Now, here's the challenge that I would say you also have to look at debt because if you're just looking at stocks with PE ratios under 20, you could run into an issue that I've run into running similar screens in the past where you find these low PE stocks, but then when you build out the valuation in the model, you realize that they have a ton of debt. Debt. And so when you deduct that debt from the valuation, you realize that the company's probably fairly valued because they just have so much debt on the balance sheet. So you have to take that into account when you're screening for securities. And that's why just a PE on its own may not necessarily be the best measure or screen because you're going to waste a lot of time. But let's see. And you know what? Actually, uh, Forbes does run into that issue with the list that they do screen for. But I'm going to point that out and dive into it further in part two of this series. But let's dive into which of the eight names they came up with. So a few of the names on the list are no brainers, you know, definitely Tencent Alibaba. We've talked about that a lot on the channel. Wells Fargo, I haven't really done any work on and I need to add that to my uh, banking tracker. And so I, I will be adding that. Um, but I'm not surprised that Wells Fargo is there just because a lot of the banks have been cheap. British American to uh, Tobacco, yeah, that makes sense. JD.com, once again, the China trade. Um, Harley Davidson, this one's an interesting one. Um, I actually ended up building out the model for this one when I saw uh, it on this list and I realized that you ran, you run into that issue where the company does look cheap at the beginning, but then when you model it out, you realize that they have a lot of debt, which is why they um, run into that lower valuation because of course you have to deduct, the, uh, deduct that debt. Now, interestingly enough, Taiwan Semi is somewhat undervalued. Now this one, you know, I, I, I I'm not going to agree or disagree that it's undervalued. All I will say is that it's very difficult for me to, um, you know, predict what the future is going to look like in this semiconductor space. This is so hard for me specifically. And um, that's why I actually moved a lot of the semiconductor stocks out of the tracker because of this. Now, one interesting name for me was Berkshire Hathaway because I didn't think Berkshire Hathaway was trading uh, under 20 times earnings. And I guess it might just be trading under 20 times earnings. But I think there's a big, a bit of a mistake here. So they're saying that the uh, company has a PE ratio of 10.4 times. And I think it's because they're doing last 12 months normalized EPS, which is fine. But there might be an issue here because the way I'm seeing this is that the consensus estimates is saying that the um, expected EPS is expected to be 1839, not in the 35 or 36 dollar range. And I would assume that this would be a normalized number which reflects a forward p ratio of 20 times earnings not uh 10 times earnings or 10.4 times earnings so i wonder what the issue is here i should dive into this a little bit more to see what's going on but you know if you can pick up berkshire hathaway for 10 times earnings that's probably not a bad place to allocate capital so i'm going to dive into this a little bit more and i want you guys to let me know in the comments below where you're forecasting berkshire's uh, next 12 months earnings per share to come in for the B securities. And so maybe it is in the $35, $36 per share range. I just didn't see it, but I haven't dug deep into uh, seeing what's going on there. But the next name is very interesting. Of course, this falls in line with the China trade, and I'm going to dive into it a little bit more. So you can see that the next name is Tencent Holdings. Now they're saying that Tencent is trading at around 13.3 times uh, uh, on a PE ratio. And of course, you guys know that Tencent owns a popular social media um, and instant message platform by the name of WeChat. Plus they own a bunch of other stuff, including online gaming. And I'll dive into that a little bit more. And you know, why did they make, or why did Forbes make Tencent their top pick? Well, it's because they believe that the company has the ability to grow very strongly or very uh, have strong growth behind them um, with a conservative valuation. And so it makes them a top 
action or top pick right now or top attractive option right now. And so let's see exactly what Tencent is. And first things first, what I wanted to do is I wanted to validate that PE ratio that they're seeing. And so that's exactly what I'm seeing. So the company is expected to earn uh, two dollars and sixty four cents next year based on one analyst consensus estimate, by the way. So it's just one analyst um, and that reflects a thirteen point three five P ratio. So that is in line with the thirteen point three that the Forbes um, uh, article is suggesting. And, you know, I haven't spoken about Tencent in a while on this channel, but just remember, guys, or recall that this is an absolute juggernaut. You know, the company started off with having the largest chat social media platform in the country they have 1.3 billion people as monthly active users they have the number one payments platform they have um they're globally number one by revenue in the gaming space so they own the social media space in china they own the fintech space in china globally they own the gaming space this is one of the reasons why microsoft purchased activision they're trying to compete with tencent because tencent really owns the space and you know in in the next slide i'm going to show you guys what's happening to this space i think uh, at least from my perspective, I think consoles are largely going away. And I think these people that own the online uh, mobile gaming space, these are the guys who are probably going to own the next generation of gaming where, you know, your uh, controller might just be your cell phone. Or you could just purchase a controller that connects through Bluetooth to your cell phone. So you just get better controls. And then the cell phone projects on, uh, through the internet onto your uh, TV screen. So you completely bypass the consoles. And that's kind of what I'm seeing coming down the pipe here. And uh, yeah, I think the PS5 uh, or the current iteration of the Xbox might be the last ones. And so just going back into this. Um, they also have the number one uh, uh, paid subscribers in terms of their digital content. And then, of course, uh, they have the largest mobile browser in China as well. So you can see that they are a future focused digital organization uh, that has um, a ton of growth ahead of it in all of these spaces. And, th and I just want to show you what the gaming space looks like over the next 10 years. Now, of course, this is just one uh, research organization. And of course, it's hard to tell um, how much of the growth will be absorbed by uh, Tencent. But I suspect that Tencent's gaming um, uh, segment uh, will likely grow in line with the expected growth of the industry. And so you can see that it's more than, uh, I guess, close to 4Xing uh, over the next 10 years. And so that's kind of nuts, or I guess we're expected to be 244 billion in 2024. So this year, and then of course that goes up to almost 800 billion by 2032. So, you know, this is a rapidly growing uh, segment um, of their overall business. And that's just the mobile gaming uh, segment itself i think the fintech segment continues to grow as well now you know uh, the, uh, just fintech and you know using apps for payments etc is more utilized in china than it is in the rest of the world i would say or, or specifically more than it is in north america uh definitely can in the us and so uh the growth may not be as fast in fintech as i expect it to be in gaming but the point i'm making is that when you're trading at 13 times earnings you're essentially expecting very little growth and that's not what i see the future for tencent and so i'm almost uh, i'm definitely going to uh, redo the model for tencent uh, but i'm almost thinking that tencent might become my larger china position this year um, and Alibaba goes down to my second largest uh, Chinese position this year. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Now, another reason why I like Tencent is because notice that they uh, th this came out in Bloomberg in December or I guess early January. Tencent tripled their buybacks uh, when the shares share price went down in December. And why did they do this? I just think they did it because they're excellent allocators of capital. So here's Martin Lau, the president of Tencent. And he's saying that number one, we are very focused on shareholder return and well, try a different way and we'll try different ways to improve it. And secondly, we do have a very strong cash flow alongside with a very large investment portfolio. Half of it is actually in liquid stocks. So we have the ability and flexibility of using different tools to increase shareholder return. 
And so at this point, if you look at the market, the valuation in the market for China in stocks is almost at historical lows. So I would say that at this point, buybacks are a more favorable means for our shareholders than other means. So this is what I'm talking about. You don't hear this type of verbiage or this type of discussion in the Alibaba conference calls. I really like that Tencent is very forthright with how they're discussing it. They're saying, look, so long as the shares stay low, we're going to allocate uh, our huge cash hoard and our investment hoard to buying back securities. And that's exactly what they're doing. And so that EPS could go much higher as a result of just fewer shares outstanding. And hey, look, if the institutional guys want to give up their shares at these historical low valuations, let them. I could be one of the people in the position where I'm buying it from them. And of course, Tencent is also buying it from them. And also just keep an eye out, guys, because Alibaba's shares have been recently being purchased by insiders, including Jack Ma as well. So it looks like there's a lot of confidence in these share prices at these levels. Now, I'm not telling you to buy or sell the securities. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just trying to report the facts to you guys as I see them come through the pipe. And so the way I see it is, you know, the share price still remains low, despite this little pop that we got recently as a result of um, you know, news coming out that the Chinese authorities, I guess, are going to support the equity markets. I, I don't think that's going to play out the way that they think it's going to play out. But considering the fact that the share still remains slow, I do expect elevated buybacks to continue, which is I think it's good for shareholders. I don't think that it it increases your wealth in any way. I think it just provides different wealth, because remember, guys, if um, you're increasing the EPS, uh, through using uh, excess capital to buy back securities, you are also decreasing the excess capital. So technically, from a formulaic perspective, um, nothing should really happen. Your uh, stock price would get higher, maybe, but uh, your excess capital would, or sorry, your EPS goes higher, but your excess capital goes down. So your ultimate value should remain the same. However, we know that securities don't really work that way. Oftentimes, excess capital is missed in valuations. And so um, buybacks work really well in increasing the valuations because, you know, when you see a company like Tencent trading, you know, potentially below 10 times earnings, I think uh, investors will pay up. And here's the tracker that tracks the securities. And of course, these share prices are not completely up to date because this was before the news came out that the uh, uh, Chinese market was going to get supported. However, uh, before the run up, you know, uh, uh, Tencent was trading at around 60% of its intrinsic value. It's probably trading at around 62% of its intrinsic value right now. And then um, Alibaba is trading around 34, 35% of its intrinsic value. Now, here's something interesting. Um, I haven't updated the Tencent model since May 12th, and I'll probably update it this weekend, but I was expecting the um, EPS to come in a little bit lower than what the market is expecting. And that might potentially be because of stock-based purchases, but nevertheless, um, the company is still pretty cheap relative to its intrinsic value. And so I still see opportunity here. Now, how do you get access to the tracker? Well, you can get access to all of my research at this low $5 a month tier. Uh, and of course, that means that you get access to the tracker, which houses all of the company's models. And uh, of course, you get access to the Patreon only community. And I put up a lot of posts, some, uh, sometimes multiple posts a day, uh, just from what I'm seeing in the market. And so it's very valuable, I believe. Also, for those of you who really enjoy the tracker and you want more, there's also live monthly calls, special courses, a comp schedule, etc., on the uh, second tier. And of course, like I always say, if you sign up for the Patreon and you don't like it, just reach out to me and I'll completely refund your money, no questions asked. And so I'll leave it there. Let me know what you guys think about Berkshire and about Tencent in the comments below. I respond to absolutely everyone. So I'll leave it there for you guys and I'll see you later.